Hello everyone, welcome to Common Mistakes in Solar Installation Part 1. The mistakes are way too many. I can handle that in one video, so there's going to be a part two. My name is Ikenna from Smiling Sun. Everything solar installation, everything inverter installation, everything going green. How are you guys doing today? Thank you so very much for joining me. I truly appreciate it, okay? And today we're looking at the common mistakes that are done in installation. All right, so the things you should never do when you're doing an installation for a homeowner, for a company, for an industry, or whoever wants to do an installation. If you do the wrong thing from the very start, you would have succeeded in ruining the experience of the user. So you need to ensure that you don't make these common mistakes. If this is your first time on this channel, welcome! <laughs> Thanks for being here and now will be a good time for you to subscribe, all right? So press that bell icon uh, so that you'll be the very first to know once we have fresh and brand new videos, all right? So let's look at the common mistakes that are done in installation that should never be. So the very first mistake that is done in installation is not doing an energy audit. I don't know how you're going to do an installation if you haven't done an energy audit. Now, an energy audit is to essentially find out what the energy consumption need of your clients will be. All right, so your client has a fan, a TV, a microwave, a washing machine. Each of these appliances have energy consumption. All right, so they all have energy readings on them that you need to take. Now, this is an appliance here. So always at the back, you will always find where there's a sticker that tells you what the energy consumption need of every single device is. All right, so you need to go around and take the readings for the TV consumption, energy consumption need for the microwave energy consumption need. And when you have all of this done, you need to collect all of these energies together and convert them to wattage, convert them to kilowatts. So once you have all of that, that will determine how much backup hour that you would need to provide in your batteries. So that will essentially inform you on how many batteries that you need to provide, how many solar panels that you need to provide. So you see that it's very important for you to do an energy audit before an installation happens. Because if there's no energy audit, there's every possibility that you might under provide or over provide solar panels and battery. So you see that if you don't do an energy audit before you begin an installation, uh, you would have completely ruined uh, your client's uh, solar and inverter experience. So it's important that you do um, an energy audit before uh, you go ahead to do installations. So another mistake that is often done in installation is using the AC breaker for a DC breaker that in itself is a crime it should never happen you should never use an ac circuit breaker for a dc circuit breaker so right here is a dc circuit breaker all right so here you have um this is essentially a schneider um this is a 250 amps um circuit breaker now you find out that in installation you have some installers using ac breaker for a dc breaker that should never happen there's a breaker that is essentially meant for for a dc installation all right so the current movement and of course the arc are not the same so you can't use an ac breaker for a dc breaker if you do that uh you will notice that there's going to be a lot of resistance it will be heating up it's not going to be allowing the electrons to flow the way it should so you will be losing a lot of energy in that process and it can also potentially cause fire in the system so always ensure that you use a dc breaker for your solar installations all right because dc breakers are meant for dc installations all right so this is what it looks like that's a DC, DC breaker. breaker. So never, never use an AC breaker in the place of a DC breaker. It will not give you the very best of experience. Another common mistake that is often done is using an AC wire to do a solar installation. Um, that in itself is a terrible wiring, it's some kind of terrible installation, all right? So you should never do that this is an ac wire right so he right here is a 4 mm ac cable and you find out that some installations are done with this 
um, type of wire connecting this to the solar panels and uh, bringing it down to connect to your solar charge controller that is very very bad wiring you should always use a DC wire okay so this is what a DC wire looks like this is what is meant for your solar installations so if anybody comes to do installation for you and the person is using AC wire the person is doing a very bad wiring which would affect the user experience of the uh, of the homeowner of the company or wherever it's installed so always make sure that a DC wire is what you're using. Um, this is what you need for your solar installation. Um, this is what you require to do the connection from the solar panels down to the charge controllers and eventually down to the batteries. All right, so this is essentially what you're gonna be using and that's, this is what it looks like. All right, so this in itself is uh, a DC wire. This is what is required. Never use an AC wire to do your connections, all right? So this is going to inhibit the electron flow of electricity the way it should uh, from that solar panel down to your charge controller. That will make the batteries to fail. That will mess up the entire system. Always ensure that the right thing is done from the very beginning by choosing the right materials to do your work. So this is a DC wire. Um, this is a 16 mm DC wire. Okay, this is what you need for your solar installation. Another common mistake that installers do during installation that should never happen is the moment the installation is done and the charge controller is connected to the solar panels, they just leave, forgetting the fact that there's a whole lot of setting that needs to be done in the charge controller. So right here is an Outback charge controller. And in this charge controller, there's lots and lots of settings that are designed for these charge controllers, which uh, takes care of the battery. So if you do the wrong setting or if you do no setting at all and you just leave, the batteries are definitely going to fail. So always ensure that once installations are done, you come to this place and you take the manual. All right, because we know it's really not possible for you to know how to handle all the charge controllers, but always ensure it comes with a manual that teaches you how to do the settings, how to gain access, what buttons to press. And when you get into this charge controllers, you do the settings as recommended for the batteries, as recommended for the inverters to be able to ensure that all the installations that are done are done perfectly and it produces good energy and runs smoothly. Another mistake is not installing surge protectors. So this right here is a digital surge protector. All right, so this is meant to be installed in inverters end to end. All right, so that means you, you need to protect the voltage that goes into the inverter and the voltage that goes out of the inverter. All right, so um, this is done in situations where you have uh, bridges in the wire, where you have sparks in the wires to be able to protect the inverter. All right, so the surge protector is very important. It's meant to be installed before and after the inverter. That's the current flow or the voltage flow that goes into the inverter and the voltage that goes out of the inverter that's the input and the output uh, needs to have a surge protector connected to it so in cases where you have wrong wirings or people bridging in wires and all of that the surge protector will ensure that there's no damage that is done or any form of harm that is done to the inverter so it's very important that such protectors needs to be there and it's also equipped with um, over voltage protection under voltage protection it also has timer and all other functions that is quite very healthy for your inverter so it's always important that you install a such protector for your solar systems that makes it very professional Another common mistake that is often done in installation is having way too many joinings in your wires, all right? So this is your DC wire and you have this kind of joinings going on almost the entire place. Now, what you need to do is to ensure that you calculate the amount of wire it's going to take you to travel from the solar panels down to your charge controllers. All right, so that you wouldn't have a situation where you, while you're working and the wire terminates where it's not supposed to terminate. 
all right so once the wire terminates where it's not supposed to terminate that's where you have situation where you have to get another wire and you begin to join now there's something about current when a current is flowing from this particular wire to this particular wire if it doesn't experience a free flow of current there will be resistance there's of course going to be resistance at this knot that you have here and once you have that resistance you would lose a remarkable amount of energy that is traveling and you don't you don't want that to happen and even when you touch it when it's working you notice that it's very very hot so when it's hot there's resistance and all the energy you're meant to have vest is being lost along the way and in some cases it potentially also can cause fire if it's not properly done all right so i wouldn't advise joining of wires always make sure that you have an idea of the amount of wire it's going to take you to travel from your solar panel down to your charge controller but if you must have to join get a joiner there's a little steel that is meant for joining that can join two wires perfectly and ensure that you have that free flow of current but of course it's not going to be the same thing like an organic wire that doesn't have any joinings anywhere both joiners or physically having to join it at some point all right so, so always make sure that you avoid all this kind of joining all the time another mistake that greatly affects the entire solar system um, configuration is not placing your solar panel in the right place so you need to be able to ensure that while you're placing the solar panels uh, that you don't have things around that can cast shadow on the solar panels all right uh, sometimes you see a tree overhead or you have like a tank that is up close or you have some kind of building around that casts shadow on the solar panels now if there's some form of shadow cast on the solar panel it is going to drag down the entire output of the solar panel so you if you have a solar panel that is close to a building or a leaf and there's shadows cast on it it will drag the entire output down so you don't want all of this happening always ensure that you do a proper sun tracking to determine the very right place for you to uh, keep your solar panels to harvest the very best or the highest amount of energy from the sun you can put two solar panels under the sun but both of them are not getting the equal amount of energy so you need to ensure that you properly place your solar panels where it would have rest the very best of energy from the sun so another common mistake that you have is not providing enough solar panels and enough batteries that ruins the great experience one would have had because solar installations and inverter installations are very beautiful experience it's so convenient it's it shows that you have 24 hours light you know it's always guaranteed that's all we can take guys thank you so very much for being part of this if you haven't subscribed please kindly subscribe click that bell icon so that we can let you know when we have brand new videos thank you guys so very much my name is Tilly Kena from Smiling Sun everything solar installation everything inverter installation everything going green see you in the next video